Okay, so you see the benefits of functional programming concepts, and you buy the idea that those concepts are applied most effectively in a language designed for functional programming. And you finally got convinced that the f -sharp syntax is not scary at all. But you still feel lost in the f -sharp type system, with tuples, records, and especially with union types? Then keep watching, because in the end of this video, you will know all the basics you need to know about the f -sharp type system to finally get your f -sharp journey started. Let's start with the most basic types, primitives. As every programming language, f -sharp supports various numeric primitives like ints and floats, as well as strings, which behave pretty much like those in c -sharp. The problem with primitives is that these are not type-safe, in that sense that for example different floats can have different semantical meaning, but can easily be mixed up as we can see in this example. In f -sharp, such issues are often addressed using so-called single-case unions, a concept I will come back later. For now, let's assume you want to stick to numeric primitives for reasons of simplicity or performance. In this case, the powerful f -sharp type system provides another solution, which is called unit of measure, which allows us to express the semantical meaning of a numeric value explicitly in the code. Now that the compiler knows about the semantical differences, it takes care that such variables and values are not mixed up accidentally. This concept is quite helpful to avoid bugs without introducing any overhead and also improves the readability of the code. So consider using it when you want to stick to numeric primitives. The next most basic and most commonly used types are containers like lists, arrays and maps. f -sharp basically provides the same kind of containers like c -sharp. Notice that the separator for initializing a container with items is not the comma, but the semicolon. The key difference between f -sharp and c -sharp containers is that f -sharp lists, arrays and maps are immutable. The benefit of immutability is of course that unexpected side effects can be avoided by design as these containers cannot be modified. Instead, we will transform existing containers into new containers using filters and transformations, a concept you are probably already familiar with from using link in c -sharp. Let's move on to tuples, which are the most simple custom types in f -sharp. f -sharp tuples are very similar to value tuples in modern c -sharp. We define a tuple by simply combining values and variables with a comma. In contrast to c -sharp, the surrounding parentheses are often not needed. Because of their convenient usage, tuples are much more frequently used in f -sharp than in c -sharp. Nevertheless, from clean code perspective, I recommend using tuples only if the meaning is obvious, for example the x and the y coordinate of a point, or locally within functions, where the meaning can be grasped from the context easily, otherwise excessive usage of tuples can lead to increased code complexity. Which brings us to record types. Record types in f -sharp are used like records in c -sharp to define data structures of multiple named data items. f -sharp and c -sharp records are quite comparable. In both languages, records are reference types which behave like value objects, which means two records are equal if the values of all their properties are equal. The key difference between a record in c -sharp and a record in f -sharp is again that the record in f -sharp is immutable by default. Using the primary constructor syntax in c -sharp not only provides an even more concise way to define a record, it also defines a record which is immutable by default as well. As immutable records obviously cannot be modified, both languages provide the with expression to update properties while creating a copy of a given record. Tuples and records are also called end types, as these combine individual data items into a single type. The counterpart are so-called or types, which allow us to model alternatives. In f -sharp, the discriminated union type is such an or type. In its simplest form, union types could be compared to c -sharp enums. But union types are much more powerful than c -sharp enums, because each case of a union type can carry additional data, which allows us to model alternatives very explicitly. Unfortunately, c -sharp doesn't support real union types yet. Instead, we would probably use inheritance to model alternatives, and with this, we could simulate union types to some extent, as shown in this video. The most used and built in union type in f -sharp is probably the option type, which allows us to express much more explicitly the absence of a valid value than returning simply null, which is still a common anti-pattern in c -sharp. Last but not least, Union types are a great tool to address the primitive obsession issue discussed in this video by defining so-called single-case unions. In C-sharp, 
we would use records with a single property in this case. But once you start using single case unions, you will quickly realize that these are more convenient to use in such cases. And then there are classes and objects as well, because f is actually not a functional programming only language, but a multi-paradigm language using functional programming first. As to my experience, the object-oriented programming aspects of f are rarely needed to get started with f -sharp, so I decided to skip those for this video. Let me know in the comments whether I should cover object-oriented programming in f in some future video. See you in the next video.